<laughs> with another week of um, uh, Showtime with Jordan Von Hazel and friends on Las Vegas Hot 7025 FM. Um, today, for the first time, we're actually broadcasting remotely. Um, so I didn't have to, if you're actually I'm watching Las the Vegas feed. Hot 7025 Oh, no. FM, Can you mute that? Is that, um, is that, is that yours? Can for you? the first time, we're uh, actually... Uh, no, no. Oh, you know what that is? Hold on for one second. Um, so I didn't have to. I know what I have going on. Hold on. Oh no! Yes, Can you mute that? Is that um, is that today? Is that leave page. There we go. Some technical stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> you recorded that. <laughs> I should have. We're broadcasting live, and like you see, we're no frills. I'm sitting here, and I have one of my favorite people in the world joining us this week. Um, Joss, oh, I don't know what to call you. Uh, <laughs> you've known Joss, me for too long. long. That's the problem. I've known you for too long. You're like me. You have like the longest name in the world. So Jocelyn, Nicole, Barnes, Strickland, how, how should we, what should we call you? you well, I was, I, I used to be Nikki Barnes and now I'm Nikki Strickland. So, and then I used to be Twister and then I used to be Private Lynn and I used to be... Jocelyn. So Jocelyn is my God-given name. Nicole is my middle name. And the reason why I use my middle name is because when I moved to California, one of my coworkers was already Jocelyn. Our clients got confused. It was a big mess. So I decided to uh, be the nicer person and take my middle name so we could keep business moving forward. Gotcha. But you, but, but uh, across social media, you're, you're Nikki or you're Nicole. Nikki. Nikki. Yeah, I am. I'm, yeah, I'm Nikki. Um, it was Nicole at first. And then I, I like to give people nicknames. So I gave myself the nickname of Nikki. <laughs> and when people <laughs> ask me, <laughs> people would ask me, do you want to be Nicole or do you want to be Nikki? And I'm like, Hey, it's all a nickname to me. So you can call me either. You're like, just call me. <laughs> just call me. <laughs> well, so, so, so our, just so our audience knows, so Nikki is a fantastic hairstylist. In fact, she's been doing my hair ever since I first moved um, to Los Angeles. I think it's going on six years now. Yeah, I'm. It's it's definitely been. Over four years, over no, four and a half, five I, years, yeah. I, I think, because it was really soon after I moved, it was so funny how I came to you, because I had just started working uh, at the studio, and I would catch a car to work every day. And this one particular day, I called an, a, a Lyft or an Uber, one of them, and the guy in front of me, or the guy driving me says, uh, Hey, do you um, do you uh, take this every day? You know, when you're when you're going to work. And I said, Yeah. He's like, Oh, well, my my girlfriend's a hairstylist, or I'm sorry, a makeup artist at Revolt Studios, which is around the corner from my place. He's like, So let's make this a regular thing. And I'm like, Awesome. And he was black, and I was like, I just moved to town, and I don't know where to get my hair. And then that's how he I he was he was such a dang. You know, she's doing uh, makeup. She's on tour with her right now. Um, another one of my clients is her, the singer, sound engineer. So they see each other all the time, but she's moving on up the ladder. Like nobody's that's business. Awesome. Yeah, she's a great makeup artist. They just got married too, by the way. Oh, did they? Cause I hadn't yeah. seen her in years. And then I randomly was getting coffee at this place in my own neighborhood and who was standing behind me, but him, um, good for them. Although I imagine so She's not touring at the moment since. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there you go. There well, you go. I forgot about it. Right. Well, talk to me about your business, though, because, you know, everything except for essential businesses are supposed to be open. Now, I consider a hair salon essential business. Now, I imagine looking at, like, the headshots on the congressional page, many politicians mm -hmm. don't necessarily feel that way. But to mm -hmm. me should be a, a, an essential business. <laughs> that is, I mean, we just got a posting um, on our group chat, our salon group chat today, and they were talking about how, yeah, how they just decided on Thursday that salons weren't essential. Uh, weren't essential. Um, but it's, it's funny because our phones are ringing off the hook. You'd be surprised how many people think that it is essential. So 
it's it's really funny that you say that. But yeah, no, they just deemed us non-essential um, as of Thursday, so we could have been working as of, until Thursday. But yeah, we're not essential, which is which is not necessarily. This is this is what hairstylists around the world need to understand, especially the newer hairstylists. You always have to plan ahead. You always have to save ahead. I mean, that's with life. Period. But especially when you're working for yourself or paying booth rental or getting paid W-2s, it has anything to do with, you know, your artistic creativity, um, singers, everybody, whatever. You have to plan ahead. You have to financially plan ahead. So um, thankfully for me, my life is not as adventurous as it used to be. So I'm able to <laughs> save my money. <laughs> I'm able to save save my money, stay at home, cook. You know, I just got married recently as well. So it it's allowing me the the privilege to stay at home a little bit more often. And I'm just so glad that I did because yeah, it's like now I'm not at work. Luckily they're waiving um fees and you're not gonna get penalized if you don't pay your rent. I mean, they have a lot of different formulas put together, the banks um, and credit card companies and even my insurance. I mean, they, they'll they'll defer your payment for like two months. You'll still have to pay interest on it. But, you know, if you don't have the money, you'll be fine for now. And my salon in particular is giving everybody a thousand dollars, I think. Um, That's cool. Not not me necessarily um because i <laughs> i don't fall into that category <laughs> womp, womp, womp. um because they they have two locations so this is for the um the flagship mothership location or whatever i work at the new location and um yeah but they're giving their um the people that work there a thousand dollars just to stay ahead it's it's a loan so they have to pay it back but at least they're saying, something. hey, here's something to keep you moving forward. So it's not necessarily as bad as it sounds across the world. Um, it's just it's just hard when you do live ramen noodle pack to ramen noodle pack. You got to kind of yeah. think think be- beyond that. So I'm not, not here to brag. I'm not trying to brag, but <laughs> I'm enjoying my time off. <laughs> I well, well- am... Well, tell me this, because you did just get married. Like, how? When did you get married? It's not even um, been six months yet. It's been like a few. No. Yeah, it's. We got married December fourth. Um, this December. Yeah. So. Well, so to me, it seems that 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 this is like the ultimate test of a marriage. Can you stay in one house twenty four seven? Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 I agree. I agree. And there's so many people eat. My clients included, they talk about, oh, my God, I would wring her neck. I would wring his neck. I'm going crazy, blah, blah, blah. You know, but um, we were actually writing a relationship tutorial. It's not a book. It's not a book. It's just it's just a little Dr. Seuss, green eggs and ham kind of <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Back to the basics. But I feel like we give each other our space. He's working from home. Um, we don't live in a mansion, but we have enough space to be able to get out of each other's hair. And I keep him, I, you know, I cook for lunch and breakfast and dinner too, whatever. I'm not working. Technically he's working, so I'm not working. So I'm cooking and I'm, you know, I, I stay out the way. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty occupied. I have to be on Instagram and check in with my, you know, friends and family and the, internet world so i got I, that that you know alone will keep you busy for hours so. well totally and, and can i tell you your instagram game is so i think I, we talked about this either the last one was in, in 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 your chair or like right before that i your instagram game is on point like Thank so you. Point. and like i like because I'm to now kind of at this place where I'm like, all right, maybe I should kind of pay attention to my social. And I get your, your you know, you pop up in my feed and every day it's something, it's a really great photo. Like, it's like an amazing photo. And the way you capture, caption everything is always awesome. You, everyone needs to, what's your, what's your handle? It's Nikki to the world, right? Nick, yeah. Yep. Nikki to the world um, on Instagram. N-I-K-K-I. That's usually where I am only. N-I-K-K-I number two 
the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, everyone needs to follow it because because it's you, you you make my life seem boring. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it's funny. Oh my god. I've practiced. I've been practicing. You, do you know how many classes I've taken on how to take a picture? I mean, I got so many tips and tricks that behind the scenes you'd be like, wait a minute, you know. But it that's just it. <laughs> it takes that. It takes. I spent a lot of money learning how to take pictures like that. Trust me. Yeah, well, money well spent, money well spent. So talk to me, tell us about, because I think you had like a really interesting kind of path to where you are. I know you kind of come from a bit of hair royalty, as it were, and, you know, you in the Midwest, and you, you've kind of grown that and grown your own base and have worked for celebrities and, and, and to t- just a little bit about that. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, um... It's, it, it definitely began um, a love-hate relationship. My dad um, had made a really, really, really big name for himself back when people only knew about the Bonner Brothers hair show. Um, I actually just went to a hair show um, three months ago, and I went over to a booth, and I was like, hey, have you ever heard of, you know, Big Bad D or whatever? And it was like, oh, my God, the guy with the muscles. And I'm here, I, here it is, you know, 20 years later from when he was at his peak and, you know, he hasn't been out in the past 10 years doing shows and traveling and stuff. So people really know about him. So love hair relationship is because hair took him away from me as a, as a daughter. Um, but, but the love part is that I can go anywhere in the hair industry and say his name and be welcome with warm open arms. So that does feel good. Um, but, he um so yeah he owned his own hair care product line he still does and um it i never thought i would be a hairstylist ever in life i got fired from a job i moved to alabama um (laughs) trying to like be roommates with a friend and she was like oh my god i need help paying my rent can you move out here and i was like well find me a job so it was pretty much my first like Alabama, just I mean, <laughs> it, literally Montgomery, Alabama was my first salon hair job I ever worked at in my life, and um and I worked there. I was there for four mm. years, and when I got I I had a side job until I built my clientele, uh, working at um Lowe's like in the flooring department. Don't even ask where that even came from. <laughs> but <laughs> but I was working there and they freaking fired me. I totally could have filed for some type of lawsuit because it was so wrong how they did it. But um, that's a whole nother story. Um, they fired me and then I became a full-time hairstylist. I mean, if it wasn't for them firing me that day, I probably would have never might, taken might, doing hair seriously. The re- you, you might be the regional manager of Lowe's right now. <laughs> I oh my god! I, I was oh I was on my way. I was on, I was already the assistant manager in six months. Okay. <laughs> so, no. so how did you? How long did you stay in Alabama? I'm sorry. And no no offense to any of our friends in the South, but I am a Yankee through and through. Yeah. And just the idea of like going to Alabama just trust me. Was part of me. <laughs> They love, they love Alabama too. Trust me, roll tides, roll tides. That's all I got to say. But, (laughs) but it, I moved there, you know, I moved there because I didn't go to college and my uncle came to redo my mom's kitchen one weekend and he just looked at me and was like, you're not doing nothing with your life. You need to come and help me take care of your grandma. (laughs) I mean, literally, those are the words. And my mom was like, yep, take her. And so literally in one weekend, it was like, all right, I'm out. So I went to, I went to Huntsville, Alabama, which is two hours away from Montgomery. Now, and I, I took care. Huntsville, Huntsville my, my mother's parents are from Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. They're, that's a, that's definitely a classier bunch. Montgomery <laughs> is a little bit more ruly. <laughs> a little more urban. But, um, but yeah, I stayed there only for six months. Go figure. Um, I, I lasted longer in the unrulier place. But I stayed there for six months and took care of my grandmother while she was on dialysis. She got better. I got tired of my uncle. It wasn't working out. So I moved 
lo and behold, my friend needed a roommate. So I moved in with her and I stayed there for four years. And, and once I decided I had a boyfriend, he cheated on me. (laughs) How, how funny. So I was like, you know what, this is my time to leave. Four years later, I left. And I decided to um, get my education in Detroit, where it used to be, I don't know if it still is, the hair capital of the world. And I figured if I'm going to learn how to do hair from anybody, it's going to be from somebody in Detroit. So um, I went to Paul Mitchell. Well, I worked in a salon for two years, my first two years back. I worked in a salon and the rules changed and said I had to get a license. So I knew that already coming into Detroit because the rule had already changed. Um, I just didn't find the school that I wanted to go to yet, and I wasn't really buckled down on taking it seriously. Um, One of the older girls that I respected in the salon suggested what school I should go to. She said, Paul Mitchell. She was like, that's the best school they got out. And I was like, well, I want to be the best, so I want to go there. I had never heard of Paul Mitchell in my life. (laughs) (laughs) I, I was like, Paul Mitchell, yes. Oh, my God. You said it's the best place? Oh, my God, I'm going. You know, and don't even know why I respected her so much, but I'm glad that I did. Shout out to you, Shay. Um, but yeah, Shay. she... <laughs> But I went, and it was it 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 was mind blowing. Um, it was it was uh, waterfalls and marble countertops. You know, it was it was totally different than what I expected in a, a cosmetology school. We're not, we're and not in Emory anymore, right? <laughs> we're not. <laughs> it was it was like you know it was it was great. It was great. It was exciting, and 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 it, and it, I needed to be that excited to help me last, to last me through the 11 months because it got rough after six months. Let me tell you, I wanted to quit. So <laughs> I'm glad I started out so high um, because you do dwindle down. I mean, it was, it was full time, you know, all day, five days a week, um, you know, Monday through Friday. And, um, and, you know, I still had to pay rent. I had my own apartment and I was still working at the salon on the weekends and still taking at home clients. I mean, it was it was to a point where when I was getting ready to move to California, I had worked 36 hours straight. And um, so I truly um, worked for my money. Um, I saved about, I'm going to say, nine thousand and fifty dollars <laughs> um, to um, while I was in school for the last nine months. I did everything. I saved everything. So my last nine months of school, I found out I was I had a job in California. What happened was I entered into a competition selling shampoo. And to be honest with you, I bought half of it. Bought all of it. I saw the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, the tips and the tricks to get over in this world. Are you, you still you like, ha- is that what you use in my hair? Like you still have like boxes and boxes. <laughs> No, that was like 10 years ago. (laughs) I did give it away, however. (laughs) I should have kept it. That would have been a good business move. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, (laughs) But I but I I bought half of it because I saw the other girls um, didn't really want it. And for some reason, they weren't as excited about it as I was or um, excited about being there as I was. Whatever the case may be, I won. So I went to this competition. I want, I, I met the person who would soon after be my boss. And um, it's such a long story because we almost missed that. I mean, the girl that they gave the location to, she got confused. We were lost. We only had about 30 minutes left before, um, before prep was over. We were supposed to be helping prep for two hours and, and literally was in the last 30 minutes of it. And I wanted complimentary breakfast. They wanted Starbucks. And <laughs> there you go. The room was the room was right across the make a long story short, the room was right across the street from complimentary breakfast. <laughs> so my cheap hunger found the place. <laughs> and so you, have no, right? you know you spent it yeah. all on shampoo. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, so one girl said, don't call the other girls. And I said, Oh my God, I have to, she's the daughter of the person that owns this place. And so I called everybody. We went in and everybody was so shy. I was even shy myself. So I just was trying to be creative. So I started recording 
the people that we were talking to because I had remembered them from being on videos and I wanted them to feel important to take the pressure off of me. So I recorded them. I was like, oh my God, I love you. Which I really did love them. But it was like, at least I was making them, the tension was on them. So then we get to the last person and I'm like, hey, does anybody need help? She's like, I thought you'd never ask. So she sat down. I, I, I took over. I started doing this blow dry. Everybody... All of the people who I idolized the first six months that I was in school, everybody that they 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 fed us, fed us, fed us, fed us. This person is great. This person is great. These people are great. They were all in that room that day. And here I am now standing in front of them about to do a blow dry. And, and might I add, I'd never done a Paul Mitchell blow dry on a human, only on mannequins, because I actually had real clients with they only got braids. This was a blow dry bevel leafing, you know, technique that you, it was like a specific way to do it. So I knew how to do it. I I jammed it out and they were like, wow, we're going to, we're going to crown you the blow dry queen. And I was like, what? I was like, what did you just say to me right now? And then I, and then just like, just like that, I said, don't crown me the blow dry queen. Give me a job. And (laughs) I couldn't believe Jordan, Jordan, what the hell? (laughs) <laughs> Who in the hell did I think I was? I'm like, wait. I tried to stop myself as it was coming out of my mouth. And I was like, what did I just, what am I saying? Oh, my God. Why would I do that? And then the owner the owner was like, all right, you got it. And I was like, well, I don't graduate for six more months. And he was like, well, I'll see you in six months. And I was like, well, give me your phone number because I don't believe. I mean, I really literally went through all of that. And, and so, you know, the next day, the next week or whatever, I was the talk of the town and school. And, um, and when we gra- you know, when it was about to, we were about to graduate our dream boards, everything, it was like, I'm gonna be a celebrity stylist. I'm gonna go to California. I'm gonna do. So all of that was, it led me to go in that direction. But I, but compared to people who say, well, I did all those things. I tried that hard. I do the same thing that you've done and I didn't make it. I feel like the people that say that either it's not your time or you actually didn't do it the way that I did it. You know what I mean? And there's a a lot of people that work their entire lives to get to a place that they never get to because they actually aren't making smart decisions. Totally. In, in well, and to also to go what, back to a saying too, I mean, a lot of everything has to do with, you know, luck and timing, right? You can be totally right. prepared. You can know everything. But right. certain things, certain paths have to cross, certain introduction, like so, so much of everything is timing. Like I think about now just what everything that we're going through with regards to like coronavirus, right? Oh my right. goodness, you were coming out of college in May. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd say that, uh, that's all I have on my face is a uh face. Or I'll say spring break, you know, either or. <laughs> But you could be totally ready and totally prepared and have totally had a job offer. And guess what? The timing is just not right for you. At this I mean, time. when my husband graduated from uh, Ivy League College, the stock market crashed for, mm-hmm. you know, it was like the beginning of that. So it's just, you know, and he's a Ivy League, very smart person. Why wouldn't he? he I would hire him at every job he applied for if it was me. You know, he's just that good. So I totally think that, not you know, bias or anything, not that, <laughs> I, you know, has nothing to do with it, but, <laughs> but, but I'm, but I felt, but I know for a fact, well, not know for a fact, I know from experience that, you know, most of all of my life, I've always felt like, why me? Why me? This isn't, oh my God, I got to try so hard. I got to work so hard. You know, that my dad being who he was didn't didn't promote me an easier life in my personal world. It only afforded me an easier life now that I'm in the career that I'm in. But growing up, I was not fortunate. I was not, um, I didn't have, I was the person on the no luck side. I was the person that you would look at and think, wow, her luck is bad, you know? And I never looked at it like it was luck. I looked at it like it's just not meant for me at the time because I'm going to get it. You know, I, I never, I never let it, let it soak me up in that type of way. And so, and so, yeah, so I came out, I got the job. It was in San Diego and I was here um, in my, I took, I took my test to pass my, to get my license in Michigan. 
and then came to California, needed to take a test again, was on such a high horse, took the test, boom, failed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> failed. Womp, womp, womp. So wasn't so lucky there, was I? You know? <laughs> so, I so, was curious because, you know, you, you, you kind of fell into hair, right? Like in the sense you, had, you hadn't thought about, oh, this is something that I really want to do for a career. But, you know, thanks to... Lowe's firing you, you're like, okay, I guess I'm in it. Literally. But at that point where you realized, oh, wow, this is, I can really have a career in this and, and I really want to, you know, lean in to this, as they say. Um, good question. Um, it was actually in Alabama, um, believe it or not. Um, it was actually the moment Lowe's <laughs> fired me. <laughs> it, was, it was the moment Lowe's fired me. And my little flyers that I had passed out, I was starting to get callbacks. And I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm actually making money right now. You know, so it, I honestly can say it was about a month or two after they fired me was when I was like, I should take this seriously. I don't know what I've been doing this whole time. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so of all the things you've done, right, like, you know, you know, do working with your clients in the salon, right? Working with celebrities, you know, as they're like personal hairstylists, teaching, I know education's really important to you. Like, is yeah. there one particular lane that you're like, you know what, I really love this for this reason? Or or do you, is it the variety that you're just like, yeah, you know, like I, 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 I'm every woman. Yeah, you know, honestly, I don't, I have not, I have not accepted that, I would be a salon owner one day. That is not one of my dreams. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I could possibly be fighting it the same way I fought being a hairstylist. So that could totally come by to, back to bite me in the ass one day. Um, but I think that being a salon stylist, you have to deal with so many different emotions, so many different risks, so many different personalities and, and feelings involved and so, so much risk to take. And then you also have to be there, be present. You know, it's not, it doesn't allow you to travel five times a year, six times a year, um, which was, is a dream of mine. Um, and we're just on your own where you don't have to work, you know, where it's not you're traveling to be somebody's helper or, you know, traveling to um, make somebody else more comfortable. So being a hairstylist, Owning a hair salon is not one of my dreams, but other than that, I'm every woman. <laughs> other, other than that, I think I think that's the only thing I don't dream of, and I, I've never dreamt of. I feel like I could run a salon easily, but but then again, uh, I feel like I would rather do it with help with someone that I trusted. I wouldn't want to do it alone at all. Period. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What would I know? I mean, you know, everyone's kind of like, you know, just kind of like at a stopping point right now, just in terms of, you know, what's going on in the world. You know, your salon's closed, you know, my show's closed, live entertainment's kind of dead. And so I'm looking at this as like a moment of like, all right, let's kind of, for the first time, I think, really, where, you know, we always you know, have like goals or like, this is something I want to work on, or this is a project that I'm working on and that we're working on. But at the same time, we have to balance that with, you know, everyday life and the things that we are responsible for at the moment. And I think that this is kind of like the first time I've ever known where literally, you know, everyone has a pause. And I, yeah. I, I think this is kind of a time of like, okay, so now like, let's really for the first time since maybe like, you know, before you enter the work world, you can really say, all right, so what's the next thing for me? Or what do I want to do? And you can really focus on it, balls to the wall. So this time next year, we're having this conversation. The world's moving again. The economy hasn't tanked. Where, where do, what, 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 would you, what would you be reporting? Or what would you love to, to kind of see, like, oh, my career has taken this turn, or I've accomplished this next goal? Two things. Two things. I would like to, um, my husband and I are, uh, we've been working about eight, nine months on an idea that we have um, catered specifically for the beauty industry. Um, I can't speak about exactly what it's about, but it's something you've never seen before, never heard of before. And it's it's revolutionary in in, in just the lightest terms. Um, so I would like for that to be 
something that we've at least sold a hundred thousand units on. Um, it's like at this time next year. I feel like this is like 1976. <laughs> the guy who invented the Jerry curl was saying, "Oh my God, I'm I'm inventing something that's revolutionary, never yes. seen." Before. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's like the Jerry curl. Okay. Yes, that's exactly what it's like, honey. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Woo. I'm so glad. Talladega Nights. Think about it. <laughs> no, seriously. Yes, Jordan. Yes. Oh my God. When I tell you that you have never, ever in your life, I mean, even even for you, you're going to enjoy it. And it's so funny because the 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 promotion that we want to do on it and the commercials and stuff are going to be able to be so like take you back to the when you were a kid type of thing and really just hit some endorphins that just kind of touch see smell sight type of thing um i'm really excited about it and then the other thing that we're that i'm actually working on right now um i don't have to be as hands-on with that product because it's more technical but um so the designers are doing it and my husband's working on it but but since i have nothing to do um I talk a lot and uh, a lot of them, <laughs> not like you can tell or anything, not like, not like this conversation like is boring or anything. Little, my favorite little wallflower. That just... <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm over here recycling paper. Okay. Because that is my take back and give back to the world. But, um, I am over here writing down. I have, I have so far 14 different chapter titles um, because I am writing a book on being a better woman. That isn't the title. The title is way better than that, I, but I still haven't figured it out yet. But, it's um, Harv already wrote that, that book. <laughs> Oprah already wrote that book. <laughs> I'm thinking of Steve Harvey, but it's Think Like a Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of like look, you are hitting it. You are definitely you are gonna be my agent. This when this is over, <laughs> you you know how to you know what realm I'm trying to you know my audience. That's what I should say. Uh, <laughs> it, it it it's an interactive woman's and male's perspective. Um, so it'll be a little bit different in in that um in that light. But yeah, I'm writing a. I'm writing a small, what did I say it was going to be? Uh, it's not a book. It's not a book. It's not a book. It's a tutorial. It's a, it's an interactive tutorial on how to, um, just some tips and tricks to make life a little easier, basically. That's cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Do you anticipate when, or do you have like a, a an anticipated, or you know, like it, it, I know, I know that now everything is kind of up in the air. But do you have like an anticipated of like, oh yeah, I'd really love this to be out in the market by. Yeah, so we we actually found a I found a publisher that I would love to work with. Hopefully they'll accept me. Um, I don't know all the logistics to um how that goes yet. But I, I, I found the concept of what size I want, how many pages I want. Um, it's really short. It's a really super easy read. Nothing's hard about it. Um, it's kind of like a shit happens, so get over it kind of book. Right. So, um, it, so to be honest with you, we've, we've saved. We're ready financially for anything that comes our way. So as, fin as soon as I'm finished writing, I'm not going to overwrite and as long as I can not overwrite, I can be done sooner than later. Um, I am, I am such in a bubble. I was like, oh, I can finish this in a week, you know, but um, I am hoping to have it done, to be honest with you, by the time this mess is over. April 19th is when they say we're out of the cage. So mm -hmm. by April 19th, it's such a simple, short read. I can honestly be finished by April 19th. And we have as long as we, the thing is for me is trusting companies. As long as we can find people and companies that we trust um, to take our money and to give us what they say they will, um, as long as we have that, then we're 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 ready to go. So I'm hoping for the same thing. I'm hoping that this can be a nice short read for our um, to go hand in hand with our other product because it's kind of you do it all in the bed. It's not 
no no pun intended, but it's, <laughs> it, it, it takes place. It all takes place in the bedroom. So <laughs> <laughs> if that isn't catchy enough, if that isn't catchy, I don't know. If that's what it doesn't make you ponder. With that tagline, you could probably start pre-selling orders now. With the- <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, you know, I'm still working on advertising. So yeah, so I'm really excited. I mean, I'm I'm I was excited. I was there. They have there have been points where I wasn't excited. Just just to press re- rewind really quickly. When I when I didn't pass my test, I worked for free for three months, and then. Three months after that, my apartment burned down. So my life, and this was in all of San Diego, California. So I I went down to nothing and below nothing. So it hasn't always been seemingly easy. It is definitely a lot easier now. It's not seemingly easy at all. It's a lot easier now, but it took a lot of dedication and preparation and humility um, to to feel like I am at a place where somebody would look at me and say you're lucky or you're blessed or whatever. Yeah, that's awesome. So, as as you as you get all of these other projects off the ground, and I know your your mind's always turning, so there's going to be even more after these two. Down the road, do you see yourself kind of stepping away from? you know, having as large of a client base as you have and kind of moving more into just being more of like a full-time influencer and a full-time um, voice within the beauty industry. Yes, definitely. And that would probably be where I open a salon, right? Because it's like, I love my clients and I, for me to walk away from them is like, oh my God, I promise you, you're going to be okay. And they're like... <laughs> They're like, but how, you know? So then I'm like, well, I'm training these five young dazzling stars and, and they can, they can take over for me. So that'll probably be how this salon deal comes about when I'm not even trying to do it just because I love my clients so much that I can't just walk away and know they don't have anybody. So That'll probably be what embarks that. And then, yes, I will be stepping down from it because, you know, here I am all of a sudden my hands hurt, my knees hurt. I I never imagined that I would have any physical issues because I've never had any, even when I heard people complaining. But I'm 36 years old. I'm happy to be 36, but your body does take a toll on you. I do stretch. I work out from time to time. Enough. (laughs) (laughs) But probably not enough. But you know, it. I need to. I need to relax these bunions, and I need to do some other things to, you know, to make me feel like I'm. I'm moving in a in a moving higher direction. So yeah, definitely expect to do a little bit more platform speaking. I don't necessarily have to be a socialite. Um, I don't. Hence why we can't do video chat right now because I don't have my glam squad with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, I, <laughs> I just I just wanna I wanna spread some my, my 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 goal in life is to learn as many tips and tricks as I can to get ahead in America. Um, and then I'll move on to the world. So Very once cool. I learn all one of those things. Talk, yeah. Once, one, one, there you go. And and once I learn all of those things, then I want to share them. So, I mean, that is my venture, business venture, travel adventure. That's my venture. Um, and so, then when I have enough stuff to give back, I'll be happy. You well, so you mentioned to go back because you mentioned Glam Squad. So I have a question for you, specific to the hair industry. Why is it that so many hairstylists who are like really good hairstylists and really walk around with their hair looking like crap you know that you know is that is, <laughs> like, that is definitely is definitely it's terrible it's terrible <laughs> let's, just, let's just say let's just say this is just let's be honest it's just as terrible as you having to wait two to five hours in a salon to get your hair done like uh-huh. it's out it's outdated it's played out it's it's you need to let it go like (laughs) let it like there needs to be a new wave a new edition of hair you're right i cannot (laughs) explain i will say this i will say this it they do say that hairstylists work just as hard as construction workers 
So just imagine a construction worker coming home, throwing his shoes everywhere, leaving the toilet seat up, <laughs> scratching his butt. You know, I mean, <laughs> that, you know, it's like we and then if you're single, if you don't have a, a husband or a boyfriend, somebody to cook for you or have something ready for you, like you're really doing everything by yourself. So in their defense, I'll say, you know, it is hard being a hairstylist. But it's it's to it's it's completely like a letdown when you see somebody online, you take one of their classes, go to one of their seminars, and you see them in person, and it's just like, what the hell was she doing last night? You know. <laughs> so I mean, I, I that's that, and, and 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 what I try to do is is I try to keep regular clients. So when I come to work looking crazy, I'm like, hey. You know me. Don't be judging me. You know, <laughs> because I've had my days. But now I found a trick. All you have to do is buy a top hat. You just need one of those hats. You pop them on. Pop on one of those hats from Target, and boom, you're flashing. <laughs> like they need to. They they need to get some hats. That's all I can say. <laughs> I need those round hats, not the baseball dad caps, the hats with the brim. <laughs> it's just so funny because, as you know, it's an image business. So I, I've always found that to be really, really fascinating. Speaking of image, going back to your social, because, again, I'm very, very fascinated by your Instagram. And Thank everyone you. to check it out, Nikki to the world. But how much time do you devote to your social media presence? Like, do you do like a day and say, okay, this is what I'm putting out there all week? Or do you spend like a, you know, a, a certain period of time every day tending the garden? Yeah, yeah. I do think that everything in life needs to come with a balance. So because I'm, I'm newlyweds, I do have to be available for my husband. But at the same time... Research <laughs> development for your, your new product. <laughs> at the same time, my social media has gone down since I've, since I've been in a serious relationship, might I add. About two, three years ago, I would spend at least three hours every night. I wouldn't start until midnight. So around midnight to about three o'clock in the morning, I would be on social media liking up a bunch of people's stuff. So by the time they woke up, they see a bunch of my likes. They like my stuff back. By the time I wake up, boom, I got, you know, 500 likes or I got whatever I want. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people don't, people don't, even the, even the, um, um, I forget the word they use, but the app itself, it won't let people like you unless you like them. So I spend about, yeah, I spend about two to three hours um, a night, maybe every other night. But yeah, let's be honest, I was bored. So every night <laughs> I would <laughs> I would be online and I did it because I knew that I needed to grow um, my page and I'm still growing my page. But um, then I started getting busy. But then you work a lot. So on my days off, especially three days a week, I would probably be on about five hours. I mean, but then during the week when I had to go to work, I'd probably be on for three hours. So it's it's a job. It's a job. It's uh, it's definitely a job. It's not it's it's not um it's not easy. But then you have to find your time for things that work for you. And like I said, I I I I, I get on at midnight. But back then I was posting more sexier pictures. It wasn't just about hair. So you uh, got to kind of know your audience with that too. Now that I post about hair. I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. So I post something by seven o'clock in the morning and the people who respect hair times, they're up and they're liking my pictures, but you know, to the creeps that stay up at <laughs> night, um, <laughs> you know, me posting at midnight was just good for them. Just when they girl went to sleep or something, you know? <laughs> so, so it's, it's just, yeah, I think it's just knowing your audience, knowing, knowing if you want to, you trying to, promote to something more sexy or you're trying to promote to something more professional. Um, but it took, it's taken, it does take a lot of work. And I, I wish that I could hire a company to help me with that, that I trusted. But um, until I find somebody perfect that I feel, I've tried a couple of people and I didn't really like them um, to just, you know, manage it and help me with posts and stuff like that. And like people's things that I thought liked my stuff. But now I'm just managing it myself because it just seems more authentic. And I try to respond to everybody 
who leaves a comment, um, I mean, it can take hours sometimes responding to people's comments. But I do that because I feel like not a lot of people do it. And if you do have the opportunity to do it where it's not like it's not like I'm getting a thousand to two thousand comments, you know, so I can reply to a hundred comments or hundred, two hundred comments. I can apply, reply to that. But that's still going to take a long time. So yeah. but it's worth it. It's worth it. So well, that, that, that brings me to another question, because I've been talking to a lot of entertainer friends right about social media versus old media and like one of the discussions I was talking to my friend Adam you know Adam Barta yeah yeah talking about um just having a social media presence and creating content for you know social you know digital versus like you know traditional like television and broadcast and and how we've kind of determined just from some of the professional experiences that we've had that they're almost like two different worlds. So like building up like a really big social presence doesn't necessarily equate to success in a more traditional form of media. Right. In terms of just what you've discovered, you know, of course, you know, having a social, an engaged following can kind of lead to kind of a, a, its own lucrative career, right? Mm -hmm, As a, mm -hmm. But do, do you find that your... Um, uh, social presence and your success in the social presence um, has affected the other areas of your business, like like your client base, like your you know speaking engagements, whatever it might be. Yes, I will say yes, and I think that is because I'm personally on my page. I right. think that is because I am personally um, answering answering DMs. And I mean, people call me on DM, okay? <laughs> it's like, um, you know, I'm like, what? You can do that? You know, but no, I, I definitely have, I've made a lot of money from Instagram, thousands, definitely for sure, um, off Instagram because it, because I'm, I am directly responding. I mean, I'll have money on Instagram and I'm all on my, I'm checking my text messages and I need to be checking my DMs, you know? So, <laughs> It, it's like I'm like oh shoot I'm missing money you know but but for other people who are you know probably having these fake likes and giving back these fake responses and having these you know just not real conversations nobody's taking that seriously you know so I, I think that if you are going to hire a, a company to help represent you they better be real authentic as authentic as money can buy because um people on in the social media world are starting to be a little less social media ish you know they're they're getting a little bit more realistic about what's happening around them and what they're getting themselves involved in and who they trust so mm -hmm. even the the content that I put out I try to put out a little bit of who I am instead of making it so 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 you know just hair because I, I want them, I want to sell myself, I want to sell my look, I want to sell my energy, I want them to see my smiling face, you know, I want to be as interactive as I can in letting them see me smile, dance, sing, whatever, tell a joke, um, all positive things, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like that helps me, it not only helps me uh, book appointments, but it definitely helps me gain new clientele, because a lot of my clients travel on tour, and they're probably in Germany giving somebody my Instagram. And then that person hits me up and is like, hey, I just saw you have a client in Germany. Like, let me get my hair done. So they don't even have my phone number. So it, it helps. It helps. It helps a lot. That's exciting. Yay. Yeah. So aside from working on your, your, your multiple, multiple projects, uh, doing all that kinds of research and development with your husband. Um, what, what, what have you been keeping a days now that, now that the salon is, is closed for the time being? Well, I've been eating a lot. I've been like, am I, I better be pregnant. I better be pregnant. My son better not be this big for no reason. <laughs> no, I'm just like playing. Everybody's beach body is going to be for, for. It's it's going to be a tire, a tire, or tire. That's what's going to be. Um, yeah, I we 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 we've been working out a little bit. I've been cooking a lot. I've been snacking a lot. Um, I've been resting a lot. I've been watching some TV. 
And now that I got into this second week of being off, that was the first week. All just, like I say, balance, right? So I got to have my lazy time. I got to have my healthy time. I got to have my productive time. So last week I chose to be lazy, chose to get my rest in. And this week I'm just focusing on, um, I don't have to, like I say, deal with the research for the beauty product. But as far as this tutorial um, slash booklet that I'm writing, um, that's really the only thing that I'm doing right now. Other than talking to people, I've been giving a lot of hair advice. I've been getting a lot of hair phone calls for like how to grow my hair all the way like in Alabama, like not Alabama, Atlanta, one of my cousins in Atlanta. Um, I've been giving a, I've been having a lot of phone conversations about hair. Just ironically, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, but I love it. Um, and then I just recently decided to start posting a little bit more education on my Instagram page. So I just posted a, I posted a video that I actually made for my sister-in-law, um, so she can do her boyfriend's hair. And I decided to post it on my page and it's getting some pretty good responses. So I was like, well, maybe I should just post a little bit more of some educational things. So I might do that. Maybe not. Um, but I'm just chilling. I'm relaxing. And I am trying to, as always, find the best tips and tricks to get by in America. <laughs> 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 That's the highlights of my life. <laughs> so we have exactly four minutes left. So okay. give us, in this time of the coronavirus, we're all at home, figuring out what the next thing to do, give us the one tip that we should think about and start employing while we have 24 hours a day to sit to do it. Right. I feel like you should figure out what your finances are. I feel like you should figure out what banks would, uh, would loan you money so you can build your credit. I feel like you should um, obviously check on your loved ones. You know, I feel like you should drink as much water as you possibly can. Um, but that, that makes me think of, I just recently saw someone posted a, a thing on social and it was something along the lines of, you know, when I was a little kid, I thought that coffee was an adult beverage. But then when I was a teenager, I thought that uh, liquor was the adult beverage. But now that I'm an adult, I realize that water is the adult. Exactly. Beverage. <laughs> it's so important. It's so important that you, it's a cliche, you know what I mean? It's like a cliche, you know, just like being a lady, like being gentleman, being a gentleman, you know, it's a cliche, but it's like really, really seriously. I, I, I hope and pray that people, you know, like do some really good face scrub regimens, you know? Um, but, but, but furthermore, if there isn't anything that somebody has like a, a task or, um, a hobby that they're interested in, that they want to do, if anything else, just get some rest. You know what I mean? Just don't, just, don't worry. Let the wheel stop spinning. Just sh let your body sh relax itself so that you can have enough energy to get back out into the world, especially people who are working for themselves, because we're going to be busy. So and, and call the banks, call the credit companies and tell them to suspend whatever payment until two more months from now. Take full advantage of that because you never know. You might need to take your money out the bank. Who knows? But, you know, it's like take advantage of all the opportunities that you have right now because of this, especially getting some rest. I say get some rest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm so glad you called in. I always love having conversations with you. Tell, tell us again one more time where everyone can follow you and your. Yes, please, please, please. Um, I, I'm always on Instagram. It's Nikki, N-I-K-K-I, the number two, the world, T-H-E-W-O-R-L-D, Nikki to the world on Instagram. Awesome. And you can find us on both Instagram and on Facebook at, at, uh, Showtime with Jordan. I forgot my own handle at <laughs> Showtime with Jordan. And we're going to be back here again next week, uh, with another friend, uh, Monday at 5 PM Pacific, 8 PM Eastern and, um, follow us on, on, online for some extra clips and, and, um, and you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you again, Nikki, Jocelyn. Thank you for having me, Jordan. I appreciate it so much. 
anything for the Paul Mitchell blow, blow dry queen. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you soon, Nikki, and I'll see talk you guys you next soon. week. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye.